an ice cream graveyard, a clown motel, and Nicolas Cage's grave? That and more bizarre American tourist attractions. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. As we go into summer, it's tourist season again. And after more than a year of lockdown, it's going to be crazy. But if you don't want to join the four million other Americans traveling to Disney World, here are ten lesser known attractions you can visit off the beaten path. Very far off the beaten path. Number 10. Why visit the happiest place on Earth? when you can visit the creepiest place on Earth. The Vent Haven Museum in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky is the world's only museum dedicated to ventriloquism. You know, that art form for people who aren't cool enough to become magicians. Jeez, leave some action for the rest of us, lady killer. At the Vent Haven Museum, you can, for some reason, pay your hard-earned money to see a wall of heads more disturbing than the one in The Walking Dead. I'm pretty sure the vent in Vent Haven Museum is short for hyperventilate, because that's what you'll do when you enter and see this collection of soulless wooden demons just waiting for you to let your guard down. Doesn't this seem like fun? Because if you're in Kentucky, might as well see the doll someone wished on a monkey's paw to become a real boy that grew up into Mitch McConnell. But if you're in the mood to see a different building filled with dummies and puppets, you can visit number 9. The White House. Replica. In Atlanta. It was built as a tribute to democracy by an immigrant from Iran. It's a private home three quarters the size of the White House in Washington, D.C. Who would want to go out of their way just to take a picture of a miniature White House you're not even allowed to enter? Obviously. Libertarians. This three-quarter scale White House is a libertarian dream because it's proof that someone can actually succeed at making the government smaller. That's a bittersweet victory. But if you want something extra sweet, then there's always number eight, Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream Factory in Waterbury, Vermont, where you can visit their flavor graveyard. This is a physical cemetery filled with ice cream flavors that were killed off. Not to be mistaken with a cemetery filled with people that were killed off biting too much Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Rest in power, Diabetic Dave. Ben and Jerry has the largest flavor graveyard in the world, outside of British cuisine. Here you can pay your final respects to the dearly depinted Ben and Jerry flavors, such as peanut butter me up, making whoopie pie, and Dragging your family here instead of Disney World is a perfect example of why your kids resent you and why your wife will wind up getting full custody mint chip. Not surprised that last flavor didn't take off. It was really hard for some guys to swallow. And our next bizarre tourist destination involves something you should never swallow. And we'll get into it after this break. Welcome back. Number seven, if you find yourself in Seattle, Forget the Space Needle and the Pike Place Fish Market. The tourist destination you need to visit is under the fish market, the Market Theater Gum Wall. It's a wall covered in chewed gum. Tourism! Because back in elementary school, who didn't feel the underside of the cafeteria table and think, if only there was some way this could be even grosser? Well, you did it, Seattle. This isn't even a one-of-a-kind attraction, as there's a bubblegum alley in San Luis Obispo, California. You know, part of being a credible journalist is admitting when you're wrong. I've talked a lot about the Wuhan virus lab in China recently, and I think I might owe them an apology. Because the more I think about it, the more convinced I am that one of these locations has got to be the birthplace of COVID-19. And if you think that was strange, this next tourist attraction is bananas. Number six, 
The International Banana Museum in Mecca, California, has the world's largest collection dedicated to only one fruit, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. For only one dollar, you can slip on in among all the appealing items ripe for viewing in this museum, bred from a passion for bananas. Were those banana puns too much for you? If so, then the Banana Museum would probably wreck you. If you're ever in the area, instead of visiting the Banana Museum, I recommend you split. Number five. If you thought those jokes were crappy, wait until you hear about the world's largest toilet in Columbus, Indiana. It's part of the Kids Commons Children's Museum. This toilet is designed to teach kids about plumbing systems and how they work. Because it's about time they grew up and learned what really happened to their goldfish Admiral Pepper. No. He didn't go away to live on a farm. Even if he did, farms aren't underwater, so he'd be dead there too, Timmy. Quit crying and grow up! Even though this attraction is designed for children, it's beloved by adults as well. Mainly because the toilet is an entrance to a slide, so you can literally watch kids get flushed down the toilet. A fantasy many of us have had when seated near a screaming kid on an airplane. While this attraction is fun, it's a bit controversial because of its name. I'm not sure how they can get away with calling it the world's biggest toilet when New Jersey still exists. Number four. If you're thinking, now come on, Chris, you can't just leave me hanging with only one toilet-themed tourist destination, don't worry. I got you covered. This next attraction is the number one spot for number one. The most scenic urinal in the world located in Keala Kakua, Hawaii. Now you can enjoy nature's majesty when nature calls, and feel like the tropical version of Tyrion Lannister relieving himself off the edge of the world. There's even a toilet there, although it's facing away from the view. Which means this attraction doubles as the world's most beautiful monument to men. Look, there isn't even a door on there. What a great way of appreciating Mother Nature while pissing off mothers everywhere. Worst family vacation ever. But if you have a hard time going in public, don't worry, because this next destination will scare it right out of you. I'll tell you all about it right after the break. Welcome back. Number three. If you wind up in Tonopah, Nevada, it likely means you crossed the wrong mob boss and you were buried in the desert. But if you somehow wound up there willingly and need a place to stay, they're known for their world-famous Clown Motel. Because when I think of a place I can get an undisturbed, peaceful night's rest, I think of a place like this. Boy, doesn't this just make you want to lay down, close your eyes, and make yourself completely vulnerable and defenseless? The Clown Motel has all the features you'd expect. Clean towels, fresh sheets, and a blood-filled balloon in the sink. And yes, that balloon floats. And when you stay in this motel, you'll float too. Just kidding. They're just regular clowns. This place isn't actively trying to creep you out. What's that, Shelly? Oh, apparently the clown motel is located right next to an abandoned cemetery. I'd say that seems haunted, but even ghosts are too freaked out to stay at this nightmare factory. Speaking of clown burial sites, number two. Our next crazy attraction is the Grave of Nicolas Cage. But isn't Nicolas Cage still alive, you ask? Yes, he is. That's what makes it so crazy. The next time in your New Orleans, skip Mardi Gras and Bourbon Street and go pay your respects to the greatest actor of all time at the Nicolas Cage Pyramid. This nine foot tall cement pyramid mausoleum is entirely featureless, except for lip prints on the back from fans, and the Latin phrase, omnia ab uno, which I think translates to, I'd like to take his face off. Cage bought the last two plots in New Orleans' crowded St. Louis Cemetery No. 1 to construct this monument. He chose this cemetery because it's also the final resting place of the voodoo queen Marie Laveau. It's theorized that Cage might believe by combining the power of a pyramid 
and the magic of Laveau, he can rise from the dead. Because even in death, Nicolas Cage won't be able to turn down every terrible movie offered to him. Of course, for voodoo spells to work, you often need a lock of human hair. You won't have any trouble finding that at our last bizarre tourist attraction, which is number one. Layla's Hair Museum in Independence, Missouri. The museum features over 400 wreaths and more than 2,000 pieces of jewelry made from, yep, human hair. Next Mother's Day, why don't you try apologizing for the world's most scenic urinal debacle by getting mom a bouquet, like this one. Don't worry, there's nothing creepy about it. More than likely, the person whose hair this belonged to is long dead, since many of these pieces date back as far as the 17th century. Hair art was practiced at the time as a way of commemorating dead relatives, as hair was the only part of them that was left. Which is a fancy way of saying people were often disappointed at will readings. I know you wanted the house or my savings, sweetie, but instead, I left you this bracelet made out of my ponytail. You should have visited more often. If people are into this sort of thing, good for them. But I don't understand traveling for it. If I wanted to see a disturbingly large collection of detached human hair, i just look in the drain after I shower. So what do you think of these bizarre American tourist attractions? Leave your comments below and recommendations for any other crazy attractions. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.